Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to do a part four by Dan Luca's uh, Hidden Parts of Salvation. Now, really, these videos are addressed to his little cult. He's trying to justify his ministry. Uh, in the early part of the video, he talks about the King James Bible ministries and his really YouTube ministries. Here. And now he's trying to pretend he's going to teach it. He doesn't teach expository teaching, which is verse by verse, and he's not preaching topical preaching, which is dealing with all the verses dealing with a particular subject. He avoids the sub verses he wants to deal with. So he just deals with a subject, essentially, and just basically goes down there, and you see him constantly distorting things. I told you you'd have to make a break, you know, try to make a separation between him and John, John MacArthur, because John MacArthur teaches the exact same thing he's teaching about changed life. So he's about 20 minutes in, and he's talking about uh, the blood atonement. 23 minutes in, so if I go back here. The guy just puts, spills out lies and lies and lies, people. The guy is a professional liar. The Muslims, they come out and they say, well, he was a prophet. Well, then his blood would have meant nothing. You see. Now, 1 Corinthians 3 through 4 is implicit. The blood's there. So JT Doubt does go to Matthews. You don't need to believe blood alone to get saved. You should do. You have to believe Jesus Christ died for your sins and the cross. That's what Brian said. You have to believe the uh, fundamentals of the faith to be saved. So that's why you go through Romans 3 to 4, 3, 4, and 5, instead of running all over the place looking for the word gospel. That was a summation. That wasn't a definition of the gospel. That was a summation of the gospel. He had to have God's blood. Just as simple as that. You say, well, how does a soul have blood? They don't. Well, then where did he get God's blood? Because he is God. He is the body of the Godhead. He's the body of the Godhead. Godhead isn't talking about body. Look it up. Godhead talks about the attributes, the nature of God. He doesn't talk about the parts. Let me tell you where this guy went. He went to Genesis 1, the image of God, the first screen, first Thessalonians 5, 22, Brought to my body, soul, and spirit, a man, tripartite, and then he went to the God here. Nothing connected. The image of God there is Adam being a person that have a relationship with God, walk with God, talk with God. Animals don't, aren't, don't have a relationship with God. They just, you know, they just jump over this as well, you know, that's, that's how that's what God is, three parts. And he thinks this makes sense. He thinks he's actually talking, like, you know, this, like, like the same person. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. Because he's, he's bodily. Because the Word became flesh, the second person of the Trinity. Not the Father. That's who had the blood. The unique person of the, the unique person of the universe is the second person of the Trinity. Not the Father. Not the Holy Spirit. Bodily, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Right? Or excuse me, verse 9. Verse 8 talking about being not being spoiled by philosophy, like the Trinity teaching. Okay? The blood atonement's there. And there's scores of scriptures that talk about. Yeah, the blood atonement's there. That's what we tell them JT tells. JT does. In 1 Corinthians 3 4. The blood atonement's there. Oh, you have to believe blood atonement. The blood atonement's there. You should have to believe blood atonement. You might not be aware of it. See, now he's trying to cover his tracks. You have to give him two thumbs up with uh, what JT does. The blood being there and being necessary. So when you hear a preacher saying, the blood atonement is necessary for salvation. That doesn't mean that the blood atonement is the gospel. Uh, it's part of the gospel, Brian. Brian, he's a prayer. It's part of the gospel. You have to have faith in the blood. That's what Romans three twenty five. Faith in the blood, the propitiation. You have to believe in the person of Jesus Christ. You got to believe in the blood atonement. He died for your sins on the cross. Rose again from the dead. So it's part of the gospel, Brian. That's one of those hidden things of the gospel. It's not hidden things. It's very clearly said in Romans 3.25. It's only hidden because you went to 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 3, uh, 15 through 3, 4. If you go to Romans 3, it's not hidden. It says very clearly. Propitiation through his death and his uh, blood. 3.25. Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Let me be clear be clear. It's because these guys went on in the first Corinthians 3 to 4. Instead of looking at what the gospel tells you very clearly what the issues are. Of salvation. In Romans. But you understand. He went to Romans 2 and 3 for conviction, didn't he? Later on. You just understand, oh, Jesus died 
he was buried and he No, see that people? Not that Jesus died, but that Jesus died for your sins. That's the substitutionary aspect of the blood atonement. He didn't just die, he died for your sins. This man's a liar. Rose again. If he didn't do those three things, salvation would not be possible through him. Yeah. But he's died for your sins, not just die. He saved us. Why? He died for our sins. There we go. See, he left that out in the beginning part. See? Dying for your sins, that's the issue. That's the propitiation. That's the blood. Then he's buried. Yeah. What happened to the body, Brian? The body was in the grave for three days, Brian. So where, who was, what, who was, who was in hell for three days, Brian? You'd have the father in hell for three days, Brian, not the son, because the body was buried for three days, Brian. Oh, okay. Um, Muhammad died for his beliefs, and he was buried. Muhammad didn't die for his beliefs. He got poisoned. There's something he got killed. He died for his beliefs. Buddha died for his beliefs and he was buried. He didn't die for his beliefs. He just died. Did they come up? Nope. See, now he's preaching. Did they come up? Nope. The fertilizer, worm food, over where they're buried. You see? Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. He has power over death. Therefore, he has power over our life and death. He is God. Only God has the power over life and death. Yeah, but he's not the father. Brian. I'm not God. You see, if some loved one of yours drops over dead, I can't go over to him and say, hey, stand up again. I bring you know life back in it. I can't do that. I'm not God. See, that was insightful. Hmm. <laughs> First John room. chapter 1, verse 7. Like I said, I'm just trying to go through these quickly here. Because I've done so many different studies on all these different points and whatever. You've been exposed as a lie, every one of them. First John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Is the blood part of your salvation? Yes. Do you have to believe in the blood, somehow put it up here, eliminate this stuff here, and say, it's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood. That's nonsense. You're a liar. You're a foul-mouthed liar. Denying the blood, just like John MacArthur did. Just like John MacArthur. When you go to 1 Corinthians 3, Jesus Christ dying for your sins on the cross is the blood atonement. Propitiation is through faith in his blood, Romans 3.25. It says very clearly. But they want to skip to Romans 1 Corinthians 3 through 5 and say, because there's no blood there, and say there's no blood atonement, you have to believe blood atonement. That's exactly what you believe in. Just because you don't know you believe in the blood atonement, that's what you believe in. It. That Jesus Christ died in your place for your sins. Now he's saying that's uh, known things. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. So that is part of the blood atonement. It's absolute nonsense. It's part of your salvation, but you aren't going to... It's part of your salvation. Part of your salvation. Because it's implicit in 1 Corinthians 3 through 5. But see, if you, went, if you didn't jump to 1 Corinthians 3 through 5, you wouldn't have the problem. Because you'd be, referred, you'd be in Romans 3, which would tell you the blood atonement is through his faith in his blood. It's only when these guys are hopscopping all over the place that they have a problem. Understand... The purpose of the blood and, and everything else when you come to the Lord as a sinner. All you can understand there is, I'm a sinner. Jesus died for me. Okay, I'm a sinner. Say it this way I'm a sinner. I'm going to be judged for my sins. I can't save myself. The Bible says Jesus died for, my, for, for me and paid for my sins. Yeah, blood atonement. That's the blood atonement. And you find that in Romans 3. If you went through Romans instead of running through First Corinthians, which First Corinthians fifteen isn't even talking about salvation, it's not salvation. It's talking about the walk. You don't have to understand 
how the blood gets in there and how that it's God's blood. Oh, no one says that. There's a lot of things you don't understand when you get saved. Imputation, reconciliation, propitiation, justification, redemption, adoption. A lot of things you don't understand when you get saved. But those things happen when you get saved. All those things are happening. Eternal security, being put in Christ's position in union with Christ. All those things happen. But when you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, that's what you're believing in. But in everything else, and the blood washes away your sins, and all the stuff back in the Old Testament, and the you know the killing of the Passover lamb, and how that you know God Himself shall provide a lamb for the sacrifice. Back with Abraham and Isaac, you don't need to understand all that stuff. When you, <laughs> you understand, you need to be a sinner. Die, Christ died, died, died for your sins on the cross. You need to believe that, which means you're believing the blood atonement implicitly, if not explicitly. You can't get around the blood atonement. You're coming to the Lord as a sinner. All you need to understand is, I'm a sinner. I'm going to be judged. Jesus died for sinners. It's simple. Yeah, it's simple. Because implicit is that the blood atonement. You believe in implicitly in the blood atonement. He's trying to get around the blood, people. And you wouldn't have to, you have no problem if you went through Romans. If you went through Romans, that's what you see the blood. They don't want to go through Romans. They want to go to 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 5. But if you get somebody that goes and says, I've done this, and then they reject the blood atonement, like John MacArthur, and like many... Told you. That's what he's doing. He's doing it much slower way. He's saying you don't have to believe in the blood atonement to get saved. See, now he's trying to say, uh, MacArthur teaches the same thing on this changed life that he does. He's a Lordship Salvationist. The blood atonement is implicit in 1 Corinthians 3-4. through JT does is up there playing games, word games. And these other guys. So is this guy. And what's John MacArthur's problem? Where did he fail up here? He doesn't believe the Holy Scripture. He doesn't believe that this King James Bible is perfect. That's not something we failed. Not something we failed. He went up to the minor versions. But that's not something we failed. He failed in, in he's a Calvinist, thinking that that was going to be applied to him through sovereignty, and therefore he rejected free will. So he believes God saves you. There's no free will involved. And therefore, you will have a Christian walk. Because God is controlling every aspect of your life. That's what Brian believes. The whole point. He failed here. He might know he's a sinner. He might believe that there's a judgment coming. But he doesn't believe that there is such a thing as Holy Scripture. So he can go through and he can change words. And what well, the Greek says, and actually a better translation would be, he failed here. Brian's denying the Scriptures by rejecting the Trinity. He's rejecting the truth in the, uh, the scriptures. You see. So when you get somebody that fails up here, they're going to get messed up somewhere down here. Every single time. Next. He's failed all over the place. He's failed with the Holy Scriptures. Resting. Resting all over the place. We're going to talk about imputed righteousness. Romans chapter 4. See? Now we're back in Romans again. See that? Romans chapter 4. Why are you messing around the gospel in 1 Corinthians 3? When the gospel of 15, 1 Corinthians 15, you got convicted in Romans, now you're back in Romans dealing with imputations. It's where are you supposed to get saved, people, in the Romans? Beginning in verse 22. And therefore it was... And this is all people justify his cult, people. This is all trying to smooth things over with them. JT does puts a video out says the, the blood atonement is not necessary for salvation. So now he comes back, 1 Corinthians 15, saying, We know we see the blood, no one knows about the blood, and we not believe in the blood. It's implicit. It's implicit. When you believe in the sin, Jesus Christ died for your sins, of course, you believe in the blood atonement, even if you're not, even if you're not aware of it. But the real problem comes in, they don't follow the order that God has given you to get saved. They want to run to 1 Corinthians 3 through 5, where Paul is summing up the gospel that he already preached to the Corinthians. About the blood. That's how they got saved. They didn't get saved just by believing that Jesus Christ died for the sins on the cross. They believed in the blood atonement. Paul taught them in blood atonement. That's how they got saved, by believing in that. This is just a summation to get to the resurrection. And then Paul explains the resurrection of life, the, Christian, the, the resurrected walk. But uh, let's stop here and uh, put this up. But the guy just continues on you know, line. And uh, gives you got to separate yourself from you know, John MacArthur, 
But you believe in 1 Corinthians 3 through 4, you believe in the blood atonement, substitution of the blood atonement. That's exactly what you believe in. It. It's implicit in that because that's how that's how the sins are paid for. That's how the sins are paid for. So JT does up there playing the war games. You, know, you don't have to believe in the blood because the blood doesn't show up. How did people tell me the same thing? Where's the blood in 1 Corinthians? That's, Thomas there. Substitution of blood Thomas there. Type of sense, you know, you say these people don't want to play games. You know, you can't get saved without saving believing in the blood, which means Christ dying for your sins on the cross. That's what that's what he's talking about. Stop here, put this up, and see how see if I get back to this uh, tomorrow. Amen. Thank you.